What's up guys? So it is 1.42 in the morning and I need to keep myself up till 3 a.m. so I can maintain my sleep schedule. So I thought I would go over the Conrail signals um, that we work on Norfolk Southern up in Harrisburg. So basically railroads have traffic lights just like cars do. These lights tell us to slow down, stop, go ahead, what could, what could be going on ahead of us, stuff like that. Now, Norfolk Southern runs on three different types of signal systems. Conrail, Norfolk Western, and then we have NS signals. Now, as railroads were bought and ran by Norfolk Southern, their existing signal systems were, it would have been way too much money to go through and try to redo the signal system to make it all one system. So pretty much what we did was we just adopted that signal system and ran by the rules. For areas in between, they they have their own rules that were the NS rules, but for everywhere else, Norfolk Western and the Conrail stuff and all the ex Pennsylvania stuff, um, we pretty much just adopted their signals. So what I want to go through is just our signal system, our Conrail signal system. Um, it's one of the, from what I understand, one of the more difficult systems to learn, but it's actually quite simple once you start really looking at it and dissecting what the lights mean and stuff like that. Our Conrail signal system is based on speed. It's pretty much telling us how fast we need to be going at certain points, uh, when we need to be slowing down, why we need to be slowing down, and conveying block information ahead of us as to what could be possibly going on. So I'm going to turn the camera around. We're going to go through the signal sheet here, I'm going to give you just the basic rundown as to what each signal means, uh, what the lights look like, and stuff like that. So this is not going to be a technical talk, it's just going to be a basic, what's that light, and what does it mean? So here's our signal sheet that we have. We're looking at the Conrail signal aspects. And we're going to start up here with the most basic one of them all. It's going to be our clear. There's many different ways that the signal can be displayed which is the aspect, that's what we call it in railroad terms, is the aspect of the light, so that refers to the color and the position of the light. The indication is what that light is telling us to do. So it's to slow down, speed up, and so on. But this one right here is our high green. These are our position lights that we talked about a little bit, and these are our different light mass. Now these are the most common right here, the three and the two lights. These you might see out there as well, just a single light mass, and then these are dwarfs. These are the small short signals that you might see in a yard somewhere. This light is pretty much telling us, hey, you are good to proceed at your most authorized speed as fast as you're allowed to go. Whether that be 40 miles an hour, whether that be 50 miles an hour, your paperwork, and depending on what type of train you are, is going to govern how fast you're allowed to go. Working down to the next box here is a limited clear. Now. This is telling us that we are only allowed to proceed at limited speed, which is 40 miles an hour, through all crossovers, turnouts, switches, spring switches, etc., until the entire length of our train clears those as such. And then we are allowed to proceed at our most authorized speed for our train. Here you can see a little bit of a difference here as to where the lights are positioned, but what gives the limited status is going to be that flashing green light right there. Moving on over. This one right here is an approach limited. This light is telling us that we need to be approaching the next signal, so or the next one we're about to come up on, at a certain speed, a limited speed. Now you can see here in this signal, as is in the limits, the limited clear. That green is flashing there, the green is flashing here. This is upgrading this to limited status. And as we read these three lights, and even these two lights, and sometimes with some of the dwarves, we read them from the top down. So we have an approach, which is our high yellow, and then we have our flashing green, which upgrades it to limited status. Again, telling us that we're okay to proceed, but we need to be coming up on that next signal at limited speed. This could be going in through crossover, say, you know, we're, we're coming into a block that has some switches or something like that, and, and then we might be running on a clear or a limited clear after that, but it's just telling us that we need to slow down just a little bit. Now, over here, we have an advanced approach. This, so let me back up here a little bit. These approaches 
are telling us that we need to be approaching the next signal at a certain speed. Whenever the approach, uh, disregarding this situation because it's an advanced approach, many times it's an approach with the speed, it's telling us to approach the next signal at a certain speed. When the speed is before the approach in the name, it's preparing us to stop and we need to be running down to a certain speed in order to safely stop. But we'll get that into you know, some signals later. So here we are in an advanced approach. This signal is telling us that we need to be prepare ourselves to stop at the second signal. So not the next signal, but the one after it is most likely gonna be a red. Now this light will most likely be displayed in a short block territory. Our typical signal blocks are about two miles apart to the next signal. But for whatever reason that we have signals closer to each other within those two miles, say the block is only a mile long, we'll most likely be hitting an advance approach, our next signal would be an approach, and the next signal will be a stop. So this is going to just start slowing us down within that two mile range still ahead of time. Here we have an approach medium, all right? We have, it looks just like the approach limited, the yellow, the green, and then the red, but this one is not blinking, this one is. We have an approach, and then we have the green in the medium position on the light. Now these red, sig these red lights that you see here in all these different aspects, they don't mean really too much of anything, to be honest with you. Um, the only time they mean something is if they're all up. Um, that red light is pretty much on there just to tell you that that signal head is functioning and working and the bulb is not burned out, that it's lit and is in operation. Now, if anything happens that that light is there, but the light's not on, there's a few rules that we need to follow, and we need to look at what's being displayed and what type of signal it is, because if, if this light is out and these lights are on, what is the most restrictive that this light can show in that orientation, we can still proceed technically. Um, and it gets a little weird afterwards, but depending on what signal it is and what it's showing, we have to follow some uh, special rules on how we can actually proceed past that signal. So we talked about the advanced approach, talked about the approach medium, approach limited, our limited clear, and our clear. We're going to come down here to the other box here. We're going to work across. This is our approach slow. So again, I'm not doing these in really too much of any order. Um, I can do a progression video later, but I just wanted to run through the, the chart and show you all the lights. This approach slow is telling us that we're going to be approaching the next signal at a slow speed. This is what that double yellow is. And again, this red light means nothing. That red light means nothing. There we have a small little dwarf. And here's our position lights here. So we're going to be approaching the next signal at slow speed. Medium approach medium. This light is one that kind of tripped me up for the longest time trying to get used to it to be able to pick it out because there's another light that looks very similar to it, but it's a little backwards. But basically what it's telling us is that we need to proceed through our turnouts, crossovers, swing switches, all that kind of good stuff at a medium speed. And then we need to approach the next signal at medium speed, which again is 30 miles an hour. And this configuration right here on a three light is the only place that you're gonna see a medium approach medium. You're not gonna get it on a position light. You're not gonna get it on a two light. You're not gonna get it on a dwarf. You're only ever going to get it on a line of road, three light mast. Coming over here, we have a medium clear. So this light right here is telling us that we need to be going medium speed through all of our turnouts, crossover, spring switches, all that kind of good stuff. And then once the entirety of our train clears that, we are allowed to proceed at authorized speed, whatever it is for our train. Here we have our approach. I totally just dropped the camera. Here we have our approach signal, and this signal is a progression signal that's gonna be slowing us down to a stop somewhere. So this is telling us that we need to proceed, being prepared to stop at the next signal, which is most likely gonna be a red, or maybe another approach, depending on how close we are to another train running through the blocks, and that once we pass this, we need to be already doing a medium speed, 30 miles an hour, getting prepared to stop at the next signal. Now, this is our medium approach. Our speed is before the approach in the name, all right? So we need to be preparing to stop at the next signal. 
doing a specific speed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be knocking ourselves down to 30 miles an hour and approaching that next signal, being prepared to stop. Some of these signals require us to knock our speed down as soon as the light is visible, not necessarily by the time we pass it, but as soon as that light comes into view on the main or on the track, wherever you are, you need to already be reducing yourself down to medium speed prior to passing that signal. But you can see here with the medium approach, in, in, some, retro, um, in some examples, it'll be a, a low flashing yellow or it'll be on a dwarf with a flashing red. This one is our slow approach. Again, the speed is in front of the approach, so we're going to be preparing to stop at the next signal following slow speed. Now what we can do is, is we need to immediately reduce the slow speed, to go through any type of turnouts, crossovers, or anything like that, and then we can proceed still being prepared to stop at the next signal at a medium speed. And that's what it would look like for position lights on our small dwarfs, or position light dwarfs. There's one of our yard dwarfs right there, and that is on one of our three headlights that we see in the main. Right here is a slow clear. Now this light right here is showing us that we need to proceed at a slow speed through all crossovers, turnouts, spring switches, all that good stuff. Once the entirety of our train clears that, we are allowed to proceed at whatever our most maximum authorized speed is. Now, if you can see a trick here, if, if you wanna get, you know, kind of like rule one down of reading these lights, think of the center light and his low light as the medium position and a slow position for the greens anyways for the clears um, if this light was in the middle it'd be a medium clear if it was down here it's a slow clear that's there, there's a few tricks that you can learn um, and catch on to by looking at the signals and just by in relevance as to where it's located on that three light can tell you the first step anyways give it away what that light is now down here we have a very large box with a bunch of different signal indications. Um, these are all of our restricting indications which can be shown as you can see many, many different ways. As far as position lights go, it's very easy to pick out what a restricting is going to be because this bottom lamp here is going to be going against the rail. So typically all of our signals are always being shown to the right of the track. So our track would be right here, that's the right. And that indication is showing in at a right angle to the track. So that's going to give us our restricting indication. If you notice up here in our approaches, our lamp is actually going away in the opposite direction. That is our yellow, that is our restricting. Now we do have some stop signals here that have these number plates on them. These are restricting as well. Even though they are stop signals, we are still allowed to proceed past them, but at a restricted speed not to exceed 15 miles an hour. These are pretty easy to spot and see and recognize right away. As far as the color lights go, we have our yellows, our low yellow, right here, not flashing, just solid. That is going to be our restricting. And our stop is pretty much self-explanatory. If it's all red, then it's time to stop. So that is the basics on the Conrail signal aspects. Now, there are plenty of other, you know, different types of signs, conditional stop signs, approach signs, stuff like that, that you need to know. But if you just want to get the basics of the light system, what each one means, um, what it's telling you to do, I mean, there it was. Um, it's very daunting at first, but again, once you learn the little ins and outs and what things are doing and stuff like that, uh, they can get to be easily remembered. Um, so yeah, that is Conrail Signal Systems 101 in, in a nutshell.